year um welcome to january 2024 tech coaching newsletter here are the most relevant and top stories and things you should know to start off the new year right for all your ed tech needs i don't know as i do each month i like to have kind of a theme something we could work on giving you some ideas for the classroom this month my personal focus is um, all things video. So if you are interested in taking a little bit of a dive into WeVideo or making videos with Adobe Express, or if you're on iPads, we could even look at something like Keynote to make videos. Long story short, you can make video with just about anything. So come at me with your ideas and I can help save you time by finding out the best tool for your needs. In the newsletter, if you scroll through, you'll notice I'm going to give you a few different ideas, a few different examples. One of those ideas or examples is using Adobe Express, where you can record yourself and remove the background all from within the tool. So it's like green screen without a green screen. Very cool, very slick. You can see that here. Um, the other example is actually not video, but animated GIF, which is making short GIFs, short animations, absolutely, in my mind, a, a kind of multimedia or video. So that's an option. Just because winter break is over doesn't mean winter's over. In fact, we're not really getting our snow until now. So a project that's winter themed like the snow globe, still great even for the month of January. And then my last example I want to show you is also an animated GIF, but it was done in Wii Video. So just showing you the different examples. The snow globe, by the way, the example was in Canva. Then this last example here, this is in Wii Video. Um, this is taken from Miss Hodgkin's fourth grade class. They actually were using Wii Video for a second time. We revisited the project to do an animation at winter time. And it's kind of neat for them to be able to review skills in new ways. And this time it went a lot faster, went a lot easier. They were eager to show me, you know, what they knew and what they learned. So just because you do something once doesn't mean they've learned it. But y'all know that, right? <laughs> I did put a link to actually the steps for that holiday tree animation, so if you're interested in doing something similar and you're just like, hey, I'm a do-it-yourselfer, I'm going to figure it out, that information is there. I'm happy to teach you and then you can show up and be the expert in your classroom too. You don't. The goal here is that you don't need me, that you can do this all on yourself. Current news, I've got a bunch of articles and things just to think about, but one of my coworkers, her local paper, did an article on um, the work that she's been doing in her school district and it's pretty cool, honestly. So I'm, you know, just kind of want to shout her out, share that article there about what she does as an instructional technology coach. I've got an article about K-12 ed tech trends to follow in 2024, what's kind of like the predicting what our main focus is going to be kind of coming up. Heard about this AI thing, probably going to be one of those things. Hands-on experiences in STEM is something that students need more of, so an article kind of talking about that. I have an AI Guidance for Schools Toolkit. I've got some interesting article from IBM, real-world examples where AI bias has, has come out and the implications for that, because the more we start to rely on artificial intelligence to complete things for us, we need to understand where it, it can and has gone wrong, and, and just kind of being careful and cautious with what gets produced and just being conscious about that. And then lastly, the New York Times came out with an article that said the cheating fears over chat, block, chat bots, people are afraid, you know, wanting to lock it down right away, that the fears were actually kind of overblown is the research what it suggests. Might change from school to school. Maybe you've noticed it a lot. Maybe your kids don't know what chat GPT is. That's cool. I bet they do though. And then lastly, the other thing I want you to think about is that there are a lot of tools out there, but a lot of teachers come to me about like Magic School and other AI teacher tools. A lot of those come out and they're free at first. They want you to use their tools. But then what happens is they move to these freemium uh, models. One of those things, Magic School, Diffit is another one if you've used it. They are moving to paid models. Now, sometimes if you already had an account like prior to December 31st or whatever, you get like grandfathered like a little bit longer or whatever, but eventually they're gonna want your money. So just think about that. And again, like everything, use caution when you're jumping into these new tools is because if they seem like they're too good to be true, some sometimes they are. Or use it while, you're, while you can and enjoy it while it lasts. In my currently listening and reading category, I have another book that came out. I just finished uh, drawing 
a new children's book. I do not make any money over any sales, so I do not tell you this to go out and buy it. But there is a book out there that I did just finish. It is called Little Ati with Anxiety. It is an otter, a little tiny otter, and the otter has anxiety. And as someone who myself personally have struggled with mental health issues such as anxiety or depression. I think we need to destigmatize those kinds of things. I'm happy to discuss that. But when I heard that there was a, a book that was being written, my, my author did a book about a little otter character and he has anxiety and he talks to his mom and how he gets better. I was like, this is for me. I need to do this. Even though I was kind of trying to scale back on additional projects, I was like, this really speaks to me. So um, I did take this book on. I'm pretty proud of it. I'm going to share it with you. And then a uh, podcast you can check out. I like the Sounds Like a Cult podcast, which I actually first got hooked on thanks to Myra Lokoma at South Holland. This particular article is the cult of AI. So in keeping with our topic here, my topic is never AI, yet it becomes AI because there's so much of that going on. Upcoming PD, Art Teacher Friends, the Winter Now Conference, which is put on by the Art of Education. That is February 2nd and 4th. The reason why I bring it up is because I know one of the presenters, it's it's me, uh, I'm doing a presentation. CS PD Week, CS, Computer Science, PD, Professional Development Week, is an event that is put on through my organization, my bosses, my employer, and it is over the summer. So thinking ahead to your, your plans and things you want to do, it is downstate. I'm excited because I get to participate and I get to help this year. So I love teaching and thinking about computer science education and curriculum. And particularly if you're a teacher, that computer science scares you or you're like, I'm not smart enough. I don't know anything about that. This is the event for you. It's specifically for those teachers that are like, I can't do that. So if you're interested, talk to me. I'd be happy to share it with you. We are trying to get grant money to even send teachers for free. So if you're like, hey, this could be a cool thing to go do over the summer, and then I've got another skill in my skill set toolbox, hit me up. And then lastly, the LTC, my employer, we have a website with ongoing and asynchronous online courses. So if you need your like Illinois PD hours or whatever, this is a great place to go. And many of these courses are free. So get your courses, knock them out. Found a couple of memes here for you. One is, uh, if you know the movie, let me know. Maybe I have a prize for you. If you if you remember where uh, this clip is, going back to work after a holiday, be like, let's see, where were we? In the pit of despair. What's that movie? Bonus points. Let's talk about shout outs and ideas. December is such a short month in school, in the school world because we're off. There wasn't a ton of time in the classrooms, but we do have some things to celebrate and some things to share that were particularly cool. One thing is I want to shout out my husband, if you know Mr. Lieben, he has been on his national board certification journey for years, like pre-pandemic, had to defer it in order to get through it kind of deal. Passed this year. Yay, Bubba. If you are interested in the national board certification process, let me know. It is something that I also have that I did earlier in my career. Um, it is a lot, it is a lot of work. It's very reflective though and can be very beneficial. Let's talk about my school district. So in Chicago Ridge, this past month, I did go talked about this earlier, the Trapped in the Snow Globe project. I visited all the fifth grade classes at Ridge Lawn. I know a bunch of you did this project or something similar to this project using either Canva or other tools. So I just want to shout out to you just because you didn't do the project with me. Doesn't mean it's not valid. In fact, I am extra proud of you for taking on these things on your own. I love to see teachers feeling confident enough to do tech infused activities in the classroom, regardless of if I'm there or not. So if I'm not, tell me because I want to know about it anyways, because yay, yay you. If you're interested in a project, but it just seems like it might be too hard hard or complex or you don't like a specific tool, maybe you're a Canva hater. That's cool. I'm for it. We can find another tool that does the same thing. So for example, the Snow Globe project, I may have done it in Canva, but we made a version in Adobe Express or we found a version in Google Slides so that we could do it with early elementary students. Re reach out to me. If you're not seeing it and you're like, I don't know what I'm going to happen. This is literally what I'm here for and how I can help. Ridge Lawn, shout out to Ridge Lawn. They do their gingerbread man scavenger hunt. I got to participate this year, so sweet death metal gingerbread man. You're welcome. All right, let's talk about South Holland. We did a lot of work in fourth and fifth grade in December. We did uh, Miss Hodgkin's animated Christmas trees. You saw that earlier in my video. 
we are very blessed in South Holland to have a lot of equipment that we can use in the classroom. And all you have to do, if you, if you didn't know about it, reach out, I can tell you all about it. If you know about something and you wanna know more, let me know. We can put a device in your room so that you can, you can play around with it as a teacher and, and use it. So for example, Ms. Carter West class, they've used Sphero in the past. We left them in the classroom. I came back and visited again. We used them a couple more times. There's a really cute video where the students actually, they name, we call it name your Sphero baby, and they give their Sphero a name and it says it across the, the LED screen. I'll put it up here. We just kept the Spheros in our classroom because if no one else is using them and they like them and they use them, they get more time to use the equipment why not? So please reach out if you're interested in those types of things. Dot and Dash is another robot that we have. It's that time of year again. They took out their little winter hats and put them on. One of the other tools we can use is Tinkercad. So Tinkercad is a free web-based 3D design tool that we can introduce to your classes. I say we, it's the royal we. And the idea is that it's building those foundational skills that we can scaffold to actually 3D print stuff on our MakerBot 3D printers. But not everything you make in Tinkercad has to be something that gets printed. For example, in Miss Anderson's class, we built snowmen. It's just all about three-dimensional shapes and forms and being able to, you know, kind of 360 view an object from all sides. And then lastly, January 8th, which depending on when you're watching this, might have already passed, maybe it's today, is our all day PD tech day at South Holland. So I'm very excited. I'm going to be spending my time talking about Adobe Express. Mr. Lieben is coming to visit. My coworker Eric is coming to visit. My friend Rachel is coming to visit. So it's, it's very cool. I'm very excited about it. Hopefully y'all had a great time and <laughs> next month I can uh, kind of recap it with, with all of you. So one of the things I'm learning and probably should be my resolution for the new year is to take more pictures in the classroom. If I come and visit you in the classroom and you have pictures, please email them to me and, and send them to me. Not only just for my portfolio, but then I can use them and share them in these newsletters because I think it's cool to share the work that's going on in the classrooms because it helps to inspire and spark ideas in other classrooms and other teachers, not just within your building, but across buildings, across the two districts that I work with. I have a lot of teachers that come to me and say, hey, I watched your video, I read your newsletter, you did this, this project is really cool, why didn't we have that? Well, well, come and ask. So honestly, coming to me and saying, why don't we do that? Let's me know that you were at least listening and reading stuff. So cool. Thank you for that. And I uh, hope to see y'all soon. I hope y'all had a great break, a great holiday and get your tech goals ready for the new year. I'm happy to help in any way that I can. Bye.